homework time. Yes, here we go. Lesson 37. Let's start jotting our name at the top of the page. All right, my name. You go ahead and write yours. And then let's put today's date. All right, today you write the actual date where and when you are. Our instructions for number... <coughs> excuse me. Number one is draw tape diagrams to show two ways to represent three units of five and one twelfth. And what we mean by three units of, or sometimes they say three copies of, is simply multiplication. All right. So, so let's draw two rectangles because we have to do two ways. Okay. So we're gonna draw two rectangles of approximately same dimensions. All right. Good. All right. So now in this one. Uh, I'm going to do 5 and then a 12th, and then 5 and a 12th, and 5 and a 12th, so 3 units of 5 and a 12th. So let's call this 5, and there's our 1 12th, and then we'll call this 5, and this will be 1 12th, and then again, oh, this one's not quite sized the same way, but okay, so be it. Five and one twelfth. Okay, and now the other way of thinking about this is to put all your whole numbers together and to put your fractions together. So in this one, it would be five, five, I'm trying to make sure I kind of leave enough room here, and then our twelfths all together. So this is one twelfth, one twelfth, one twelfth, and then we have five, five, and five. Now to write the multiplication expressions here, what we're doing in this first one is we're simply doing, well, we're doing three times five and one twelfth, right? And the way we're breaking that out is, uh, well, let's look at the second one here. Say, uh, We're saying, hey, if we, we can do 3 times 5, and then we have 3 times 1 twelfth. Okay, see, so this first one here is saying, hey, we have 5 and 1 twelfth three times. And the second one is saying, hey, we have 3 times 5, and then 3 times 1 twelfth. And that would be it for number 1. Well, let's roll on. And in number 2, we're going to do as we did in that first one, but actually solve them now using the distributive property, which is what we did in that second equation back there. First one's done for us, and it's telling us we can uh, start doing some steps in our head as, as we're able. So uh, if you look at what they do, say, hey, 3 times 6 and 4 fifths, we can distribute that out, 3 times 6, 3 times 4 fifths, get the two uh, products there, and then we have to convert the improper fraction to a mixed number, then we can come to a final solution. So let's see what that looks like here. So here we can split it out and say, okay, well we're going to do 5 times 4, and I'm omitting that that step right now because we really don't need it. And distributing it out, it's 5 times 1 6. Okay, great. Uh, so what's 5 times 4? Well, yeah, 20. And then 5 times 1 6 is 5 6. Okay. Um, so what does that equal? Yeah, we don't have any improper fractions or anything to deal with here. It's just 20 and 5 6. Beautiful. That's it. All right, so let's look at C now. Same idea. So this is equal to, let's multiply our whole numbers, distribute those, 6 times 2, and then we're going to have 6 times 3 fifths. And here you're probably seeing, oh, okay, we're going to have an improper fraction to deal with momentarily. So 6 times 2, of course, is 12, and 6 times 3 fifths. And again, I'm assuming you know how to do this because we did it for a couple lessons already is 18 fifths. 
And I'm also assuming you know how to convert an improper fraction to a mixed number because we spent, spent plenty of time on that. And so let's deal with that improper fraction. So we have 12 and what? Well, there are three fives and 18 because 3 times 5 is 15, subtract, and that leaves 3 fifths. And then these are easy to combine, right? You can see that. 12 and 3 are 15, and we have those 3 fifths as well. Same idea here. We're going to multiply the whole numbers, distribute that out, 2 times 7, and then we'll have 2 times 3 tenths. 2 times 7 is... 14, good, and then we have 2 times 3 tenths is 6 tenths, and this is another mercifully easy one. It's just 14 6 tenths. There's no improper fraction to deal with there. I think we have a few more of these, y'all, yeah. so let's go do some more practice. Well, bless your heart, here we are again. 8 times 7 and 1 fourth. All right, and this is just practice at this point, right? We're going to distribute out the whole numbers, 8 times 7, and then 8 times 1 fourth. I like this way of doing this, by the way, because you don't, the most common mistake uh, students make is, say, forgetting to multiply the fraction by the whole number. So distributing it out this way leaves nothing in doubt. It's a, it's a good method. I like this. So 8 times 7 is 56. 8 times 1 fourth is 8 fourths. All right, so 8 fourths. 4 as well, we'll rewrite it here, 56, 8 fourths is equal to, that's right, 2 wholes, okay? I hope you see why that is. So altogether, that's 58, 58 even, no, no fraction lingering there. And this one, <coughs> they reverse the order and put the, the whole number second. It doesn't change anything. I like, though, as a, just as a convention, I'm going to switch it back. So I'm going to write the 12 first here, just to keep things clear, yo. So 12 times 3 along with, that is plus, 12 times 3 eighths. You see how I kind of switched it back just because that's the way we've been doing them? I think it keeps it a little clearer. 12 times 3 is 36, and then 12 times 3 eighths. Well, we just did 12 times 3. Um, it's 36, and we're talking about eighths. So now we have this 36, and now how many 8s in 36? Well, 8, 16, 24, 32. So there are 4 8s, because 4 times 8 is 32. 36 minus 32 is 4, and we're talking about 8s. So 4 and 4 8s. And when you add those together, what do you get? 40 and 4 eighths. And now we just have numbers 3 and 4 to finish up, and this homework time will be complete. All right, and uh, as we often do, we'll round it out with two word problems practicing what we've learned. And notice it does not say to use the read, draw, write method, so we're not going to. We're just going to do the math, and uh, we will write a statement, of course, but uh, I don't think there's much cause to draw here. If your teacher asks you to, then go ahead and do it. But so Sarah's street is two and three-tenths miles long. She ran the length of the street six times. She was being chased by a dog or something. How far did she run? So six times tells us exactly what we're going on there. Six times she ran how far? Two and three-tenths miles. Okay, so we know how to do this. This is the same what we're doing. We'll distribute it out, multiply the whole numbers, and then... Multiply the whole number times the fraction. There we go. So it'll be 12 and 6 times 3 is 18. And we have tenths there. I'll do my equals next to it here. So it's 12 and, well, there's only one ten in 18, which leaves 8 tenths. So our final answer then is... 12 and 1 are 13, and we have those 8 tenths, and we're talking about miles. So Sarah ran 13 and 8 tenths miles. That's more than a half marathon. 
Yeah. Go, Sarah. Being chased by that dog. Kelly's new puppy weighed four and seven tenths pounds, period, uh, when she brought him home. Now he weighs six times as much. How much does he weigh now? Okay, so now he's six times as much. Uh, you see why we really don't need it to draw anything out here. It's pretty apparent the way these are worded. So six times as much as he did when he was four and seven tenths pounds. So again, we're, we know what to do. We distribute out, multiply the six times the four, and then the six times the fraction of seven tenths. All right, so six times four is... 24 and 6 times 7 tenths. Well, 6 times 7 is, that's right, 42, and we're talking about tenths. So now let's uh, work with this improper fraction. So we have 24, right? How many tens in 42? Well, that's easy to do, right? Yeah, there are 4. And what does that leave? 2 tenths. All right, so put it all together. 24 and 4 make 28. And then we have those, make that look a little more like a two, and then we have those two tenths. So our little simple statement here is her puppy weighs 28 and two tenths pounds now. And look what you've done. You've gone and done it again. That was a pretty good one, huh? This homework time is complete. Nice job. I'll see you again next time. It is once again homework time.